had agreed, gravely weighing in from his chair at the writing desk. <coughs> a man who wears a beard, he'd said, is hiding something. Teresa had just asked why it was then that Jesus had had a beard. Her mother had slapped her hard across the face. Jesus did not have a beard, she had screamed. Tell me where in the Bible it says that Jesus had a beard. You little harlot, she'd screamed. Teresa was only eight years old. She just stood and cried. Though she was only eight, she knew enough to know that in Isaiah chapter 50, the Messiah gave his cheeks to his smiters and they plucked off the hair. And she knew enough to say nothing and to just stand and cry and so not to be slapped again. Her mother must have told her father what she'd said, because later that night, after she and her father had brushed their teeth, but before they'd said their prayers, he knelt on one knee and put his arm about her shoulders. <coughs> Where did you learn that our Lord wore a beard, Teresa? he'd asked. He smelt of weak black tea that he drank with his dinner. You saw it in a picture book, I suppose. Teresa knew that her father wouldn't hit her. I read it, she said humbly, in the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> ah, her father smiled. This does you great credit, Teresa, he said, and squeezed her shoulders. Then, with his other hand, he half turned her so that she was facing him. Now he looked grave. He had a beaked nose above a long top lip and a long chin above his clerical collar. But might it not be so, Teresa? he'd asked, and it seemed to Teresa that he was asking in earnest that a man might wear hair upon his cheeks, enough to be plucked by Romans, and yet have none upon his chin. Might it not be so that a man might wear hairy cheeks and yet wear no beard? Teresa looked into her father's worried eyes. She thought it over. She didn't want to get it wrong. A man might, she supposed, have hair on his cheeks but not on his chin. She'd seen men like that. The man who delivered the milk wore his whiskers that way. I think she said carefully. That might be so. Her father's eyes were tearful and he smiled and breathed out through his nose. Yes, he said, nodding. Yes, he patted Teresa's arm. You are a good girl. He lowered himself so that he was standing on both knees. Now, he said, we can pray with clear consciences. That had been ten years before, and now Teresa's father was dead, and Teresa was eighteen. The man who sat on the fence that followed the path that led to the chapel wore a beard. A pointed beard, like Walter Raleigh. Raleigh was an atheist, her mother had said. And even if he wasn't, he certainly smoked tobacco. <laughs> Every Sunday the man would, the man would smile and politely say, hello, and Teresa would unsmilingly say, hello, in reply, and carry on walking. If he hadn't worn a beard, Teresa wouldn't have even said that he was a man. Apart from his beard, he looked like a boy. Perhaps that's all a man was, Teresa thought, a boy with a beard. The man on the fence wore his right parted brown hair long, right down to his shirt collar. His hands were big and pink. When he smiled, good white teeth flashed amid the dark curls of his beard. One Sunday, the man, instead of simply saying, hello, said, hello, what's your name? <laughs> and Teresa did not carry on. Once the organist at the little chapel had struck the wrong organ key during the hymn, and Teresa had forgotten the words. This was
was like that. A little disruption in the little rhythm of her day, and all of a sudden, Teresa became forgetful of things she thought she knew by heart. Teresa, said Teresa. I'm Michael, said the man on the fence. We both have saints' names, Teresa thought. I and nuns, and he and angels. Who ever heard of an angel that wore a beard? Perhaps, beneath the beard, he is an angel, she thought. And perhaps beneath his coat, he has wings. She smiled at the thought. You have a beautiful smile, Teresa, Michael said. I didn't mean to smile, said Teresa. The doctor wore whiskers, as Jesus did, as did the man who delivered the milk. They sprouted in badger grey curls from his pale cheeks. The baby didn't have any hair at all. A boy, the doctor said, twirling his hands as weeping Teresa cradled the child. A bastard's bastard, said Teresa's mother. Once, Teresa had allowed herself to believe that Michael, beneath his beard, was an angel. She no longer believed this. You will dispose of it, Teresa's mother said to the doctor. I will take him where he'd be cared for, the doctor nodded. In fact, Teresa no longer believed in angels at all. Her principal job at the library was to reshelve the return books. Thomas's principal job was to make tea. She didn't think that Thomas would have been able to grow a beard even if he'd wanted to. Others at the library said that Thomas was a simpleton, but Teresa wasn't sure of that. Once, opening a book, she found between the flyleaf and the frontispiece a slip of paper. At the top was written, Teresa. And at the bottom, Thomas, and in between was a poem. Teresa, mistrustful of poetry, had not read it. On another occasion, Thomas had said, Teresa, um, have you ever seen pictures of Bernini's sculpture of Saint Teresa? Teresa had. In a folio volume in the art section, she'd found a photograph. The sculpture showed St. Teresa in ecstasy and an angel standing over her with a golden spear. Teresa had blushed and closed the book with a woof of dust and mould. I saw a painting of St. Thomas, Thomas said. It had St. Thomas poking Jesus' flesh with his finger. Teresa hadn't seen that, but she blushed in any case. So Thomas knew about poetry and art, but all the same, all he did was make tea in the library. When he took her hand, his hands were still warm from washing out the teacups. Has anyone ever told you that you're beautiful? He said. Yes, she said. Once. The next day, they went into one of the back rooms. She didn't even take off her shoes. Thomas built a sort of a chair from a stack of medical textbooks and that was where they did it. Teresa didn't want there to be another baby, so she asked him to stop. But afterwards he explained that if he had stopped, he'd have made a mess all over the books. All the way through, she thought about Saint Teresa and about how Michael had been gentle, even though he hadn't been an angel. I'll marry you if there's a baby, Thomas said, buttoning his flies. When they went back into the library, he held the door open for her. There was a baby, and Thomas married her. Teresa's mother went to the wedding, and because Teresa's father was dead, made a speech at the reception. All she said was that she was ever so grateful to Thomas. More grateful, she said, than she could say. Everyone toasted the couple with sparkling water.
They named the baby after a saint in the end. Saint Oswald. But only because Thomas's father had been an Oswald. We're all named for saints in our family, he said. Ours too, said Teresa. In the end, Teresa didn't believe in many things. Certainly not in saints, and certainly not in angels. She believed that her father had been right, though. A man who wears a beard is hiding something. He's hiding the fact that he's really only a boy. And boys, Teresa knew, are brutes. Men are hiding the fact that they are brutes. Even saints, if they were men, wore beards. And they were really only boys, and therefore brutes beneath their beards. Her father had been right. Teresa and Thomas had five more children. They were all boys. They were all named for saints.